Hi, so, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know we've been mucking around with these things. It's a, a rocket stove. This is a J-type rocket stove, because it looks like a J, and we made a K-type picnic stove as well. And of course, if you like me, one of the things you want to do, and certainly one of the things I want to do, is to see if we can use that excess heat to directly generate electricity, which is why we stuck this thing on. It's a Stirling engine. We're using the heat to run the Stirling engine and then we can generate from it. But one thing we found was that unless we insulated this section here at the bottom, right there, we couldn't maintain the heat difference on a windy day to run the engine. So we stuck a lot of insulation around it. Now that is one of the characteristics of this kind of stove because of the way it operates. What happens is your fuel goes in here, which is your sticks of wood. It paralyzes, burns a little bit, gives off some gas. That gas comes to about here or so, and you need to burn that gas fully. You can burn that gas in the extra carbon particles that are coming off, you get a super efficient rocket stove. What that means is you need to maintain those essential three things of the fire triangle. Oxygen, heat, fuel. Now we've got oxygen because we've got an extra pipe here to give an oxygen inject at, at this section here. So we've taken care of the oxygen. The fuel obviously is the bits of carbon and the gas that's coming off the pyrolysis of the wood. And the one thing we're missing for that super efficiency is the heat. Because it's not insulated and we built this so we could experiment with it, it's giving that heat out to the general environment, which is fine if you're sitting around it for a cup of coffee and not so fine if we want to run, run a Stirling engine. And so the issue really is how to insulate it. Now we used rock wool and somebody posted, be careful rock wool's dangerous and I just thought, well, thank the Lord I didn't use all that asbestos I've got underneath the bench. But we tried rock wool with it. And if you look in the video, you'll see it's just stuffed around it. Not an ideal situation, but got me enough heat to run the Stirling. Now if you're doing that, you're insulating this section. This section can get unbelievably hot. I mean, you're talking about temperatures that are going to melt this steel. It's really stupidly hot. So they tend to make these things out of fire bricks, ceramic materials, kiln materials for this section here. The gas that comes off is a full burn of this, but it's hot gas. So what you would do to run a Stirling is use that hot gas. What they often do is use a mass around here, heat that mass, and it becomes a mass heater. However you do it, Insulation on this section here, round about there, is critical to super efficient performance of these things because you're adding that third bit of the fire triangle, heat, and so you get a full burn. And of course that immediately raises the question, well, okay, what's a good insulator? Well, there are loads of good insulators, but what's the best insulator? So, it was in 1964 that Ford started producing this. It's a carbon foam. Ford's carbon foam was a phenolic resin that they carbonized and it was quickly realized that carbon foam was awesome. It's mechanically quite strong, it's incredibly lightweight and the insulation properties are off the row, off the chart. Which is why they use it in things like the space station, the space shuttle, uh, they use it in boats and aeroplanes and cars. It's amazing stuff where you can heat it to thousands if not hundreds of degrees on one side and yet sleep quite comfortably on the other. The insulation properties of this are just incredible and it is a product you can buy. Now it is unfortunately rather expensive so I of course have made my own. Now I made this from a research paper called Carbon Foams Made by Sugar Blowing and it uses just sugar. That's not strictly true actually it's sugar, water and a tiny bit of nitric acid. What you need is 500 grams of sugar, 500 milliliters of water, and 8 milliliters of nitric acid. You add the sugar to the water, heat it up on your stove, and put the nitric acid in there. Once you've got that syrup, what you do with the syrup is pour it into a container. I use um, a silicon container because this stuff sticks like you wouldn't believe. Now, it's a slightly long-winded process, but once you've done that, that's all you've done. What you do is you stick it in the oven at 120 degrees centigrade for two days. Yep, two days. It'll begin to bubble and caramelize. And over eight hours, it will froth up like a, a brick foam, but the foam will be a brownish color. Then for the next day and a half, you just leave it at that temperature and it will slowly and gradually 
go black as it carbonizes. Then you whack the temperature up to 220 degrees centigrade and leave it for a further 16 hours. Now after 16 hours you pull out a solid lump of bubbled up carbon foam. Now you are supposed to put it in a kiln for three hours at 600 degrees centigrade after that, but that just burns away a little bit of the carbon and makes what's called a reticulated foam. A reticulated foam is where everything is joined up, all the cells are open. Now carbon works as a brilliant foam, reticulated or non-reticulated. Non-reticulated foams are like closed cell foams, so the polystyrene cups that you get, polystyrene packaging, that's a closed cell. Reticulated foams are much more like your bath sponge, for example. It doesn't matter much with the carbon, whether it's reticulated or non-reticulated, that foam has amazing insulating properties, so we can do things with it like stick it on top of a gas stove, put an ice cube on top of it, and five minutes later, that ice cube is still there, despite the fact that underneath is glowing red because we're turning a gas flame on it. So this stuff, is recognised as being the most amazing material ever and you can make it yourself at home from sugar. If you make it from sugar and make bricks of it then obviously what you're going to be doing is packing it around there and you'll get your insulation properties. So packing this with carbon foam means that we'll get a full burn out of there. There's a huge amount of temperature and that temperature means that we get super efficient but it does also mean that we can't take any temperature out of there. But this gas that's coming out of here, this is where you take the temperature, where you take the heat out of it to do something. So, for example, if we wanted to make a steam engine, what we'd do is put a coil and put that coil on the exhaust gas. Then we'd be using the heat, but without taking the heat out here, where it's needed to do an efficient burn, you would take it out here. Obviously, your coil can't be too small or you'll choke the exhaust. What you want is for the exhaust still to come out, but you want to be able to take the heat out of the exhaust and use that heat energy without choking this section here. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you. I hope that knowing how to make a carbon foam, then you might actually give that a go and see how it does for you. But it is recognised as the most brilliant insulation material that you can use. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and please remember to like and subscribe.